It's the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to go through the pages of our national dailies. As always, we have Chris Kende Wandu who joins the conversation. Uh, it's good to have you join us, Chris. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right, Chris. Uh, we start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Now, the bold caption says, 2023 presidency, Southwest weighs option on Tinubu and Osibajo. Uh, that's what you find on uh, the Daily Trust newspaper, Southwest Ways Option on Tunubo and Oshibajo. Uh, that's the bold header. Now, underneath you have several writers. The first writer says, Governors divided as a fanny ferry keeps moon. Why I want to succeed Buhari, Oshibajo is quoted on that. I have no son grown enough to vie for presidency. Uh, the former governor of Lagos State is quoted, Bola Tinubu. Insecurity. There may be no Nigeria in 2023. This is not the first time uh, we're hearing a statement and these kind of thoughts. But these, uh, you would actually attribute this to the Sultan. And that's what you find there. Headers dehumanized by soldiers in Kaduna, not bandit. And this is what police community is quoted to say. And just before we move away from the Daily Trust newspaper, over 100 victims of plateau attack given mass burial, many houses raised and telecom mass destroyed. It just going to affect communication. Plus the fact that 72 million persons have been bad from making calls. I mean, you, you begin to think about what will be going on in communities, uh, you know, such communities where the security concerns and all of that. It may just be difficult to communicate. 30 tertiary institutions compete for 950 million Naira CBN grant. And 2023, PDP presidential aspirant swell to 15. Rapist whips as court sentences him to death. Well, that's okay. And that's it on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Away from the Daily Trust, we'll move on next to the Nation newspaper. Tinubu rallies are governors in mission for APC ticket. That's their main story for this morning. Uh, with the writer NWC gears up for primaries uh, guidelines, Oshibajo unfolds plan. Above the masthead of the nation newspaper, EU envoys seek gas supply from Nigeria, mass barrier for 80 plateau restaurants killed by bandits. Nigeria gets 3 million doses of J&J &J vaccine from Italy. How gunmen killed Oshun APC Council Chair. That's according to The Sun. Uh, 68 kidnapped train victims in Niger terrorists' camp. There's also a story on the Red Strip just below the paper. Alleged 400 million naira fraud EFCC to rearrange Olisa May 2, May the 30th. Those are all of the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper. And on the punch 2023, Tunubu Oshibajo grows uh, groups clash. Aragba Sholame back VP, uh, that's what you find. Vice President lost his polling boot and were not aware of political relevance. Lagos APC is quoted to say, presidential race not about big name but capacity and capability. Uh, you have a uh, Osibajo grassroots organization quoted, I have no son grown enough to challenge me, says the former governor of Bola Tunubu and vice president close to us, Aragba Shola's faction. It's good to say. So you remember we saying it's going to be, mm. you know, a lot of uh, interesting uh, times for the APC and, you know, for the Southwest. Um, you also find over 5,000 debtors all 10 Federal government agencies, 4.67 trillion naira. Finance minister is quoted to say, Ogun Customs sees 102 million marijuana. Uh, NDLA seeks help. And just before we move away, police transfer case. Uh, minister Khan Youth demand justice, talking about Osinachi's death. Lagos Youth kills girlfriend and sleeps with a cop six days. I mean, there's a lot going on. Wow in our society. No resumption without meeting our demands, as who tells federal government. A national grid collapsed twice to 10 megawatt 
33 megawatts last week, and this is uh, according to the reports from the federal government. Terrorists demand 16 detained commanders exchange for over 100 abductees. <laughs> you, you know that popular saying that's always almost in every country uh, that uh, government is not expected to negotiate with terrorists. Let's see how that pans out for us. EU imports 40% of Niger's gas and uh, demands more, and you also have imported vehicles, custom slam 15% levy, levy uh, clearing agents plan strike. These are the stories you find this morning on uh, the Punch newspaper. And the final paper we are reviewing this morning is the Daily Independent. VP Oshibajo Bola Tinubu's loyalists draw battle lines. With two riders, their VP is a pawn on chessboard of some game masters. Lagos APC is quoted on that. We can't be held to ransom because of Tinubu's ambition VP group. All right, uh, several stories above the masthead. 2023 presidential poll, APC governors allay fears over consensus candidacy. 5,000 debtors owed 10 government agencies 5.2 trillion naira. That's attributed to the federal government. Other stories on the Daily Independent newspaper. Plateau attack, 78 persons killed, 70 abducted, 100 houses burned. Another fire outbreak kills pregnant woman, six others in River State. Seat at home, gunmen attack motor park, kill two persons, set bus on fire. One dies, 12 wounded in failed River's jailbreak. MTN re receives final banking approval to operate a Momo PSB. Federal government spends 12 billion naira on school feeding monthly. That's the national coordinator. PDP consensus candidate will oust APC from power, says Saraki, will ensure another APC member succeeds Buhari in 2023. That's according to the APC chairman, Adamu. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the Daily Independent. All right, let's have uh, Chris Kendi Wandu join the conversation. Chris, thank you so much for being part of the breakfast this morning. And uh, which of the headlines interest you as we went through the pages of the national dailies? Thank you, thank you for having me. Of course, it has to be the declaration of uh, the vice president yesterday um, for 2023. And um, also the reaction from uh, the uh, leader of the party, Ashura Dupola, to and the question we need to ask ourselves first and foremost is um, about the declaration. Is um, yeah, me or Shiba to qualify to vie for the uh, seat of the president? Of course, yes, he is. Does he have the capacity? Uh, I will also say yes. Um, he has been vice president for uh, almost seven years and going to eight years under President uh, Muhammad Buhari. So his competence and ability and capability to be able to do the job is not a question because there are instances where also he acted for the president when the president was away. Um, that is for that. Then the question, another question that you ask yourself is that, uh, I'm a bit worried, uh, worried by his um, statement, the statement he issued yesterday, uh, his declaration, where he said he wants to continue the legacy of President Muhammad Buhari. If is that the way to go, then he has nothing to offer um, because for us, as, as Nigerians, uh, President Buhari, uh, for me personally, has been a total failure uh, in the past seven years for the lack of what um, all the promises that he made uh, to Nigerians in 2015. Uh, none of them have been uh, come to fruition. And apart from that, he made so many. He came with so many promises. At the end of it all. Nothing seems to be happening. So if the pres uh, vice president is saying that he wants to continue with the legacy of um, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, then he has nothing to offer. But I just believe that that is a, base, a statement uh, based on exigencies because he has a principal he is, uh, he, he is a vice to, and uh, he cannot say anything to the contrary. But um, the other split side of it is also that there's going to be serious inclusion in the APC with this final declaration of the vice president. Because it was more like uh, it was more or less like the, the South West is going to get that ticket for APC. Although some other people have declared, people like uh, uh, 
uh, uh, Minister of uh, Transportation, Ruth Mia Amechi, uh, has declared. But it, it has always been that Ashwa uh, Dupabe is the more is in a book position, as we say, uh, in F1, um, to be able to clean the ticket. But with the coming of the Vice President into the play, then it's a different ball game. Then they were, were up to some of us, uh, which wasn't unexpected, was the statement um, the Ashwa Dupabe made yesterday after meeting with the governors and saying that uh, he doesn't have a son. That is good enough for rather for the president <laughs> or whatever. So you can see that um, already uh, things uh, started falling apart with the ranks of um, Ashwaju and the APC, especially in the Southwest. And since Tetas doesn't seem to be holding, as Tino has to be said in his book, things fall apart. But in the days to come, let's see what uh, you know. The president during the one of the interviews uh, said that yes, he has a prepared candidate, and he was not going to name that candidate. Um, so. Uh, because he's afraid that he may be killed. So is the vice president the candidate the uh, president is talking about, or are we supposed to wait for another one to come? In the days to come, we'll see how this thing pan out. All right, uh, Chris, I don't want to say so much on the vice president declaration because we will be uh, discussing that eventually uh, on the show later on. But let's move to other stories that are making them front and page. On the Daily Trust uh, newspaper, over 100 victims of plateau attacks are uh, given uh, mass uh, barrier. Many houses raised, telecom mass destroyed. Uh, what do we do with the situation in plateau state? The issue the, of um, insecurity is just... Uh, increasing unabated uh, where are we headed even with the sole term saying there might be no 2023 because of uh, these insecurity issues we have plague in the country that is part of what we are saying no matter how we try to shy away from it it still goes back to this government and uh, the blame squarely will be on the last of the president Muhammad Dubari, whether we like it or not he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces and he is in charge of the Nigerian nation so anything goes wrong in any part of it, he'll be held responsible the primary responsibility of every uh, government is the security of life, of life and property. And any government that has not been able to do that is a total failure. My brother, let's look at what is happening in Ukraine, the war between Ukraine and Russia. Presently, even with the, all the mass grief that we are, we are hearing about, there is no way in Ukraine that we've been told that we have over 100 people buried in mass grief. That is a country in, in, in war. Or into war, you see the oh that they, you see that you can say oh they just discovered a, a mass group of sixteen people, twelve people, twenty people. There is no way where you've heard of that. Now these are Nigerians, full fledged Nigerians, and people are saying that we are not at war. We are into serious war because if some idiot can just move into a, a, a village or into a place and massacre over hundred people at a go, and they are giving mass burial. And somebody is sitting down in a place in Abuja saying that it's the president of a, a country. What do you what will you think of that? There's nowhere in the world that that happens. There is nowhere in the world. Human beings have become are not being counted in numbers. All you last in the, the, the pages of newspaper uh, or, or television stations and the rest of them, uh, just as uh, we as journalists, it's just the cast headline, hundred people is not number, not human beings. We are not looking at it from the point that these people are human beings like you and I. These people have family, they have children, they, they are children, they are future of the, of the nature. And somebody just cut them down, just like that, and just go away, and nobody is doing anything about, anything about it. That is the challenge for me. More we still, this we say, more we happen, is this is not a good thing last time. Because most of the time we've said in the past that when it happened, that another one will happen and nothing will happen. Then what do we expect, what, or what do we less expect from the president will just issue a press statement with his aid, saying that all the perpetrators will be apprehended and dealt with. How many have been dealt with? All those that have been arrested for terrorism, uh, terrorism, for banditry and the rest of them, how many of them have been prosecuted? How many of them have been dealt with? And that is the level of impunity in the country, because if you don't bring a punitive measure to, to bear on some of these the people that perpetrated this, then that give them, they get bolder on a daily basis and going to do what they are doing. So, whether we are getting it right or not, the fact remains that Nigeria is becoming one of the most insecure state, country in the world, and that shows leadership failure on my part. All right, let's move away from the Daily Trust and take a look at the Punch newspaper. On the Punch, it talks about the concerns of ASU and the federal government. And here you have no resumption without meeting our demands this is what as is telling the federal government and so 
it feels like we probably would have forgotten that ASO is on strike, but the strike is still on and uh, they're not going back. Apart from me, I want all you guys are supposed to resume yesterday. Uh, yesterday. Today's Tuesday, yes, yesterday. And I uh, know by the weekend, they issued um, a, a press statement that they are going to move that resumption by another four weeks. What does that tell us? That means that they are not, they don't even foresee uh, any foreseeable uh, resumption of school. And that is the same thing. All the federal and state universities, the only ones uh, that are in session are the private universities. And that is how we've been going in the past few years. Uh, last year, we practically, lost, we practically lost over 11 months, which was a full session. Most of the universities canceled their whole session. That means the students lost. If you're supposed to be 200 now, you will still remain in 100. If you're supposed to be in 300, you remain in 200 and rest of it. And we are moving this in. And it doesn't seem to be. And somebody was just, uh, I read the Minister of um, Labor in the USA that he's not happy about what is going on. And, rest, and I asked, what are you doing about it? If you had an agreement, mercy, time and time again, we discussed this on this program. We had people sign, where the government signed an agreement with um, the unions and renege. And what option are they left with? That is what is called valid contract. I've always said this on this program. Valid contract is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered, as we say in, as we say in law. And anybody that signed that and part of that, irrespective of whatever you will, is get to, it gets banded by that, by the tenets of that agreement. And that is what happened. So you sign an agreement with ASU, and you are reneging on them. And ASU said that we cannot continue because. And that we should also look at the point. Well, ASU is not just only fighting for itself; also fighting for the provision of infrastructure in the universities. The way it is, uh, the level of infrastructure in most of these universities have gone to a very, very deplorable state, and that is what we're talking about. And we're really dying. And most often than not, I've said it time with that number until we start making it compulsory for our political leaders or politically exposed leaders to have all their children schooling in Nigeria. There will not be any headway. We are not going to make any headway. All right, uh, let's see um, other stories are uh, making headlines uh, from other um, papers. Uh, let's stay with um, the Nation newspaper this time around. Uh, it's quite some interesting stories. Uh, EU envoy seek gas supply from Nigeria, and uh, Nigeria gets a three million doses of J and J vaccine from Italy. But let's talk about uh, uh, the EU and um, the envoys uh, seeking gas supply from Nigeria. This is quite interesting for you know the particular union to be seeking uh, gas when we are having. Uh, LPG issues in the country and um, the rising cost of cooking gas and all of that. What does this really tell? In, to me, it sounds a bit ironic. It's not ironic. That is what it's supposed to be. If I do the right, this is that. Because you know why? Um, Russia um, is one of the highest uh, supplier of gas to e Europe. In fact, I think they are the highest uh, in the world. And because of the war going on in Russia now, the gas supply to most Europe is being ordered, and most of them are trying to boycott gas coming from um, Russia. And that leaves a, a huge gap. And come to think of it, Nigeria has one of the best uh, uh, gas in the world. Our LA liquefied gas is one of the best. One of the best in the world. It's a prime product. And by now, I think that we should be making sure that um, we, we, are, we are able to push as much as possible into the international market, especially into Europe, that needs it. So, if we do, if we have, we have enough gas uh, in Nigeria that we can push. Especially now that, okay, we can also say that crude oil is on the rise because of the war you know, between Russia and it. So, this is not unbounded. This is not an iron. But I agree with you that yes, uh, we can also do more because if you look at the cost of nuclear gas now, um, the twelve point what we call it now twelve point five kg um, is going for about nine thousand. Um, 9,000 from what we started from 2005, 3,000, now it's about 9,000 or, or, or thereabouts. So that is in itself is an iron lag with you. But the fact is that we can make more, we can make more uh, from, uh, with our foreign exchange uh, if we are able to uh, um, export enough gas, which is in large quantity. If you go to the south side, you see the plane of gases. Um, that is uh, with most of those gases are some, something that you can turn around and export, but because we don't, uh, most of the um, IOCs they don't want to do that because it costs them more to be able to do that. They rather flare it, and we have a law in Nigeria uh, guiding against flaring of gas, which most of the IOCs has not also also adhered to. But 
um, we should be able to capitalize on it and um, increase our production. But my only worry is that how many of the companies in Nigeria uh, produces gas, uh, apart from the LNG, uh, and, uh, our, uh, yes, our LNG um, in uh, Onea or wherever, somewhere in, in River State, I don't know where it is now. Uh, I don't think there's any other organization that is doing that. So, but if we can be able to increase our capacity, this is time for us to make money. Most many other countries have. So many other countries are going to, um, to the Euro, and even the United States are telling them that we have the capacity to make supply. So if we have it, I think it's enough time for us to explore and make so much money. Now that we are borrowing like sleeves, we are borrowing it practically to even service our own um, budget. This is high time for us to be able to apply. So I think the government should look into that area properly. All right, uh, let's stay with the punch this morning again. Uh, you have the train attack, terrorist demand, 16 detainee or detained commanders exchange for over 100 abductees. So uh, the terrorists are asking that their 16 detained commanders be exchanged for 100 abductees. What do you make of this? We understand that the government is not supposed to negotiate with terrorists. I mean, uh, government should not, should not over time. That's the word. But uh, what's going to happen? Do you think that uh, we're going to indulge or we have been indulging? Well, it's between, uh, between the, uh, this, um, uh, the fire and the deep sea, um, or whatever you, whatever strategy you can use. But the fact is that uh, we have to do everything humanly possible, no matter whatever it takes, to be able to make sure that every single person that was kidnapped or adopted in that train attack uh, are released. I think the last time we have about 172 or 168, I can't remember the number now, but whatever is going to take to get them released, we have to do it. That is where we find ourselves. We've done the need to, that would have been this attack, to be able to do what we're supposed to do, that would have been this success attack. That is also going back to what I'm saying about the failure of government to be able to do the need. You cannot secure the lives of your people, then why are you in government? Um, if they're making demands. My problem is that if they are there to that demand and release those people, how are they sure that? and the, the the captives will be released as well yes and that is the problem for me. so government is in a very very tight situation what i will say is that whatever it is going to take to be able to make sure that most of these captives are released let us do it so that they can be released they've been in captivity for close to about two weeks not to three weeks i think we need to do more about that so that would mean even if it includes or uh, having that negotiation and exchanging let me tell you, even in most countries of the world, including Israel and the United States, we tell you that they don't negotiate with terrorists. But if you look at the main, so if you go down and look at it, there are instances where uh, such happen. I'm not saying that they should release them. I'm not saying that they should release them. Even our president and those in government have said it before that even if you take uh, doing that, they will, if you go back to just do a Google, once you are off and I go and do a Google, you will see most of those statements made by the president in the past about issues like that. I am not saying that that is the only option. If there are other options, we have to look at them. Israel released over 1,000 uh, Palestinians, some terrorists and arrested that were, uh, that were, uh, um, that were they, that they arrested because of just one soldier, one uh, um, Israeli soldier. You can also do that, Google. So what I'm saying is that there is more in international politics when it comes to the issue of terrorism and the rest of them that there are better ways i'm a mediator and i'm a i'm a chartered mediator and conciliator and i know what i'm talking about so if there is needs then the government should look at all the options they should look at the options no door should be closed the most important thing that every single person that has been kidnapped must be released whatever is going to take to get them released is it i'm sure you saw the video of some of those uh, some of those captives that are circulating on social media we will always put ourselves in the position of if we are member, if it is our members of our family that are big now, or some of them are our members of our brother, sister, mother, father that is in that enclave. What do we do? If you are asked to pay ransom to be able to get them, I want you pay. That is the situation. And the most important for me is that our government should be able to do the need. Our security agencies should be encouraged to do the more. We can see that we are in a situation where we have said that, oh, bomb the place, bomb the place. The minister, the minister comes out that we cannot bomb it because they are. People there, uh, there are some civilians around here and the rest of them. You have not given an alternative how that can be done. Uh, the most important aspect is that the lives of Nigerians, wherever they find themselves, must be protected. Look at Kaduna now. You cannot assess Kaduna by road. You cannot assess Kaduna by rail. You cannot assess Kaduna by air. Kaduna is just barely two hours 
in back at authority, Abuja. If you are reading my list, you know what I'm talking about. That means that if it happened in Abuja, it also happened in Abuja. Oh well, so um, just before we let you go now, we'll just quickly check out another uh, interesting header. It talks about the collapse of the national grid, and uh, this is actually the second time this has actually happened. Is it the second time? Or the I third time? The <laughs> like in the space, I mean, we're talking messy. about it in the month, <laughs> or just, you know, I the month. I'm just pulling your leg, messy. They don't <laughs> mind me. That's fine. It's, uh, it, you know that. You know, we discussed this too. If you go back, when the one happened last time, was, and I told you that, uh, you said it has been resolved. I said, don't take that, for, don't take that words for it. It is going to collapse again. It is going to collapse again. Um, I, I, where I am, I've not had light for um, 48 hours. And that is also the same thing with several other parts of my day. And it's also good. I want us to go back to this government because you cannot discuss anything politics, economy, social. I want a bad thing without talking about the government. This is the government in 2015 that promised that on a, day, uh, on a yearly basis they're going to add in 10,000 10, megawatts into the national grid. This is seven years. If they've been adding 10, 10, 10 at the promise, by now they have 70. But what are we? We are hoping between four to 3,000. Four to 3,000 is what we are doing. They even meant about 5,000. Now we are going between three, uh, four to three, which means that even the one that were handed over to, they cannot meet. And somebody is coming and telling us that it's going to continue on the legacy. I don't know what legacy that uh, uh, Vice President Shepard is talking about. But let's continue to see how this works. But the fact remains is that apart from uh, the generation, we have problem. We don't have so much. I don't think we have so much problem with the generation. What we have a problem is the distribution part of the of our electricity. Because it, what happens is that even what we have presently, once it's generated, what we have cannot even be able to carry that. So we need to upgrade. And ask yourself, these Jenkos that this goes that we are giving so much, we're handing over these uh, uh, properties to, that we even went as far as paying them to be able to, have, to take this. What have they done in the past five, six, seven years or eight years that they've given? If we find that they are not capable and they, have, they don't have the capacity, why don't we? Why can't we look at the time that we sign with them and get more people that, people that are more capable to be able to do the job? What do we find on a daily basis? They've gone into the arranged neck, neck, N E R C. I've given them the go where we that and go ahead to be increasing tariff on barely on a daily or on, on a monthly basis. And that's what they've been doing. So they don't even care whether you're getting the power or not. They continue to implement. And even you look at it, we, they discuss the issue of metering. Go and look at how many homes are metered in Nigeria. They prefer the, uh, what do you call it now, estimated bill. And upon that, they are not giving the power. And that in itself is having a serious punch on the economy because the all the SMZ, SMEs are practically dying. SME is the engine room of every economy. And once we can't get them working, then that is the end. Because that is the, 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 the that is where the majority of Nigerians get themselves in. That is where they get everything. So power is all is not working. The companies are dying. We are also looking for foreign investment. How can a company come and invest in your country that way you cannot even boast of power? It is a very big problem for me, and I hope that all this will just come and go, so that in 2023, God willing, we'll be able to get somebody that has the vision, and the mission to be able to take this Nigeria, to this country, to the next level. What we are just playing well is what I what we are, what we are just practicing is what I call Kano Kano, Naira Bet, Bet Nigeria kind of politics. That is what our trial and error. Our, that is what our, our government is doing, and it's not it's not helping anybody. Well, uh, thank you so much, Chris uh, Kane de Wandu. That's the much that we can take at this point. And that's because we need to move away right now. And we do appreciate your thoughts every time, and we look forward to having more of you on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, and do have a nice day. All right, thank you, Mr. Wandu. Away from off the press now, we'll go back this day in history and check out what actually transpired this day. And when we come back from that, we'll be looking at the Vice President's presidential declaration in a moment to join us again.